Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you an easy way to make these fracture sims that emit dust when they break using Pyro. For anyone that just wants to see the nodes, I'm going to show you a brief overview of those at the end. So if you're interested in that, you can just skip to this timestamp. Alright, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spawn the object that I want to fracture in. I'm going to use a torus from the shelf here. I'm going to control click this. Uh, I'm going to go inside of this newly created geometry. And I'm going to drop down a transform node. On this transform node, once I've selected it and flagged it as the one I want to uh, view, I'm going to move it up using the handles. You can use the transform uh, area over here and input very precise numbers on each axis, X, Y, Z. Um, but I don't think that's necessary for this. So I'm just going to drag it up until it looks about right, and I'm going to rotate it. The reason for me rotating it is so that when it falls and hits the floor, it will uh, create a more dynamic fracture instead of hitting it flat on the bottom. Okay. Now that's done, I'm going to come back to OBJ level and I'm going to run a simple fracture on this torus so that it can explode. So you want to come over to the simple effects tab on the shelf tool and then you're going to find a simple fracture. I'm going to deselect my geometry here by just clicking or dragging in the empty space and then I'm going to click simple fracture and I'm going to click my geometry and I'm going to hit enter. The reason I deselect everything first is so I don't accidentally apply the simple fracture to a, another object by accident. And then what it's going to do is take us immediately into a newly created node. So I'm going to back out for a second. So here we have our donut. I'm going to rename for the sake of viewing. And this is the original one, which has now turned the display flag off. And it's brought us into this new fracture, which I'm going to call donut fr for fracture. Cool. I'm going to dive back into that. And it's created quite the mess for us. I'm going to click inside of the node uh, window here. I'm going to hit L, which will lay out all of our nodes and give us a little bit more space to breathe. But first things first, you don't really need these two nodes here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those, hit L again, and get us a nice a clean setup. So what it's doing here is it's using an object merge node to bring in our torus. Then it's using an RBD material fracture to assign a bunch of things for us that we don't need to worry about. It's going to fracture it. It's going to add uh, constraints. It's going to do all kinds for us. Um, we don't need to worry about these settings right now. Uh, the RBD configure you actually don't need right now, but you might as well just leave it in. And the fracture solver is actually what's going to drive the simulation. So if we press play, we'll see that it falls completely through the world. And that's because we don't have any collision for it to hit. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the fracture solver. And we're going to come to the collision tab. And we're going to come down to the ground collision area. And we're going to hit ground plane. And as you can see, it creates a ground plane for us. So if you press play now, you'll see that your torus hits the ground plane and wobbles a bit, but it does not break. That's because the constraints that the RBD material fracture has created for us are just too strong to break right now. So what you can do is you can come over to the RBD material fracture node, constraints, and here we have a glue constraint that is created. What we're going to do here is just turn the primary strength way down. For example, if we turn it to one and press play, we'll see it completely shatters. Uh, this isn't exactly what I want, so I'm going to tweak these settings a little bit. I'm going to come over to chipping, enable chipping, wait for that to enable, and then I'm going to come to constraints, and I'm going to set this to around 130, and I'm going to hit the chipping to maybe just zero. I'm going to press play. Cool. The reason I've added chipping to the simulation is to add a little bit of dynamicness. I've set the chip strength to zero, meaning that on impact, all the chips will break loose, which in turn compromises the strength of all connected pieces, which makes it crumble a bit more rather than pop apart like dropped Legos. Okay, this is looking good. There are a couple more settings we can keep in mind if we want to change our simulation though. If you'd like to add more levels of detail and more fracture points to your simulation, you can come over to the RBD material fracture node, scroll down in the primary fracture area, and then you can change the scatter points, which will be the amount of points used to determine the scattering. So, for example, if I turn this up from 5 to 10, you can see the resulting change on my geometry as it gets fractured more and more. If I change it back, you'll see it gets less, and if I change it up, you'll see there's more. And if we run the simulation quickly, you'll see that there's a lot more pieces that crumble, and it changes the entire dynamic of the simulation. You can also do the same for the second layer of fracture, because by default, this node creates two levels of fracture. It'll also increase the detail. Bear in mind that increasing these does increase the simulation time quite drastically. So I'm going to leave the second one at 5 and the first one at 5 also. If your simulation playback is slow or you're using heavy geometry with lots of polygons, highly recommend caching in your simulation here so they can read it from disk and not memory. 
So now we're going to create collisions using this geometry so that later on it interacts with the smoke that we create. So from this first output, I'm going to go ahead and create a VDB from polygons. So we can use this to drive our collisions. It's going to spit out a little warning here saying geometry has been converted to quads and triangles. That's not an issue. It's just letting us know that it's created a conversion for us from polygons to VDB. And if we wanted to get rid of that, we could just put a convert node in between and take care of that ourselves. But that is not necessary. So I'll leave that be. On the VDB from polygons, we're going to change a couple of things here. We're going to add a surface attribute. And on the drop down menu to the right here, we're going to select point V. And we're going to set the vector type to displacement slash velocity slash acceleration. The reason we've done this is so that when the geometry interacts with the smoke later on, it's able to use its velocity to push the smoke around. Just like in real life, if you waft your hand through a wisp of smoke, um, the smoke will follow. Now for the sake of organization, I'm gonna drop down a null and I'm gonna name this out space collide. That way, when I'm referencing this later on, I'll be able to find it easily because things in all caps show up higher in the list. And I'm also from the same output, gonna create a null just for visualization purposes and call this out display. That way, if we're using this one, we don't have to look at the VDB and we can just see the geometry for how it is. So I'm gonna set a display flag on that. Going back up to OBJ level now. Now we have our fracture and collision set up. We need to tell Houdini we want smoke to appear when it breaks and exactly where we want it, which would be on the in-betweens where the pieces meet. For this, we'll be using the debris source node under the rigid body category and the shelf here. Make sure you're, not, you're an OBJ level. Make sure, and make sure you have nothing selected. Click debris, click your geometry and press enter. Now, it's created a few things for us here. Firstly, it's created a pop or particle simulation, as you can see here. This will be helpful if we were simulating debris or other particles. However, we won't be needing it for this method. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete it, which would be the debris sim. It's also created this debris geometry, which inside has a dop import. We don't need this either, so you can delete that. Now, we're left with our debris source, which is exactly what we're after. If we dive in here, We'll see that this node is creating the particles we're going to use to source our smoke. So if I come over here and hide other objects, you'll see just the particles relating to our collision. We can see the particles that activate once the geometry breaks up, the colored ones here. These are actually what we're after. To do that, we'll have to come over to the debris source node and we're going to tick remove unreleased. That means it's only going to use these activated points to emit our smoke. But as you can see, the particles stay around forever, meaning that the smoke will keep emitting long after the torus is broken, which we don't want. To fix this, we can actually just come over here and tick remove at end of life. And what this is gonna do is just kill any particles off once they've reached their lifespan, which is determined by the lifespan value up here. But as you can see, even by doing this, there are particles that linger and even reactivate much longer after the torus is broken. To fix this, we're going to come over here and use a speed threshold. What this does is it kills any particles going under this value. So if we press play, we'll see that once they're going under that value of one, they die. And anything going above one is allowed to live. Now, if we play this back, we can see that the particles come in when the geometry breaks up and disappear shortly after. This time is exactly when the smoke is going to emit. Back on OBJ level, we're going to revisit the shelf tool with the legacy pyro effects tab just over here. We're going to deselect everything. We're going to select, uh, where is it? Billowy smoke. And we're going to select our debris source, not our donut fracture geometry, our debris source. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. That's going to create a couple things for us. Out here on OBJ level, you can see it's made quite a mess for us. It's created a pyro import and an auto dop network. The auto dop network is where our pyro sim is going to be. So we're going to rename that pyro. And the pyro import just imports the um, density, velocity, rest, and you can see all these other attributes, temperature and heat. Basically imports the whole PyroSim into a small little package that we can cache out and view in the um, viewport, 3D viewport. So we dive back into the Pyro simulation. You can see it has created a couple of things for us. It's created a Pyro smoke object, a resized container, and a source density from debris source. And that's where our smoke is gonna be uh, source from and that's set everything up in here for us so if we go ahead and press play 
We're going to see it create smoke from our debris, but it cuts it off a bit. That's going to be the resize container here, which is a gas resize fluid dynamic node. And that's going to be cutting everything off. You can just disconnect that completely if you like, and that will no longer do that. And then you can set the bounds using the pyro object, uh, using the size or by dragging it here. But we're going to reconnect that and we're going to go to max bounds and untick clamp to maximum. And if we press play now, you'll see it envelops the entire smoke sim. There's a couple of things wrong with the smoke sim though. Firstly, you can see it's going completely through the floor. What we're going to have to do here is come over and drop down a ground plane. And we're going to plug that into the merge. It's plugged itself into the right side of the merge. I'm going to click on merge. And I'm going to click shift R to swap those around. You can also just drag them around in here and reorder them. I'm actually going to turn off the display for the ground plane. It's still going to be in effect, but it's just going to be out of our way in the viewport. If we press play again. You can see now that the smoke is interacting with the floor and flipping through it. Now we have our smoke emitting from our destruction sim. Now what we're going to want to do is add collisions to this so that when the pieces flail around, if pieces shoot out, the smoke will react accordingly. In order to do that, we're going to create another one of these volume source nodes. So we're going to tap tab, volume source, I'm going to drop that down. We're going to go ahead and use the initialize section here and it's going to do everything for us. We're going to hit collision and now we'll add collision and collision velocity. We're going to go ahead and plug that in to the merge and we're going to go ahead and source our collision. So if you click this button here, it will bring up the uh, paths. We're going to go to OBJ level. We're going to go to donut frack. And this is why we named our collision and the null out collide in capitals because it shows up at the top of the list. So we're going to go ahead and click out collide and click accept. That's going to bring our collision geometry in. Now, if we press play, you'll notice that nothing has changed. And that's because we have not referenced the source volume as we as we created it. So if I go back out here and head over to our donut fracture into our VDB from polygons, you can see it created a VDB with the name surface. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that, go back into our pirate and the source volume on our smoke source. I'm going to go ahead and name that smoke source, sorry, collision source. On our collision source, I'm going to go ahead and name that surface. Now, if we play this, it will be referencing it. One way we can check if our collisions are working is that we come to the smoke object, the pyro object here, and we tick collision. You can see now that if I press play, it's sourcing the floor and it's sourcing our uh, collider here. Wonderful. I'm going to untick that. And now you can see it's using our geometry here to collide with the smoke. Um, one thing we can do is obviously turn the division size down to get a finer look. This will take much longer and I would recommend doing this only after you're happy with the general look of your simulation. One more thing you can do on top of this is come over to the Pyro Solver, Advanced and use OpenCL to use your graphics card if it's much stronger than your CPU. I'm gonna leave this turned off for now because it seems to be rendering or simulating just fine. But if you have a particularly slow CPU and you wanna use your dedicated graphics card, I'll go ahead and tick this on and it should be a lot faster for you. One more thing we can change here is if we go ahead and organize that with L, if we come over to the collision source, scroll down, we have our collision velocity. Now, if you remember earlier, we created a, ve a velocity attribute on our collider. This is where we would control the influence of the velocity. So right now it's on 1.5, which is fine. And if I play this, you'll see it's okay. It has a fair amount of um, influence. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back so it's a lot faster. There you go. You see it has a fair amount of influence. Smoke follows where the debris goes. If I go ahead and come to the collision source and let's crank this up to about 10, we'll see if it's noticeable here. So as you can see, the smoke is affected a lot more strongly using the direction and the velocity of a collider. This is an extreme example. I would only change this value by maybe 0.5 at a time. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 1.5 because I like the way it looks. This, you would change this example if you had, let's say, rubble exploding outward and you wanted nice smoke trails to follow that rubble. This is the saying you would change to exaggerate that look. Now we have our simulation essentially fully set up. There's a couple things we can still change though. If you're gonna change your division size to, let's say something 0.3 for a finer simulation, you should also likely come over and change your debris source simulation settings. After we created Pyro out of the debris source, it actually created a few nodes for us here. It created a create density and add noise and rasterize. We don't need to worry about the add noise too much, 
but if you come over to the rasterize you can see that it is using the points we have as you can see here the points we made earlier to create a kind of cloud of emission using the rasterize here uh, and you can see that that cloud is quite thick and it extends past our points quite a lot uh, if you're happy with the emission, you can leave this be. But if you want finer emission that is more accurate, especially for maybe something with more fidelity, you can come over to the rasterize and you can change the particle scale and the voxel scale. Um, you can see here that this attribute is actually controlled elsewhere. So I think it's in the create density. Here we go. The particle separation and the particle scale. Changing these respectively will make the simulation a lot tighter or the emission, sorry, a lot tighter on the particles. If you change this to 0.4, you can see it will emit just around those particles. This will drastically change the look of the pyrosim, however, as I'll show you here. So as you can see here, it's a lot wispier as it emits from a much smaller area, so it's less billowy. This is completely up to you and how you want your simulation to look. And I'm actually quite happy with how it looks now, so I'm going to leave the settings as is. I'm going to come back out to OBJ level into my pyro import, and I'm going to go ahead and cache my pyro. All right, we have our PyroSim cache now. We can go ahead and play that. There we go. I also definitely should have cropped our, or cut down our timeline to about 120. It's past that, nothing else happens. Back on OBJ level now, if we press play, we should be able to see how it all comes together. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the floor up here so I can get a better view of the pirate. So there you have it. As you see, the Taurus breaks apart and the pieces in between emit pyro and drag out the smoke and collide with it quite nicely. And this piece here that flies out, again, if you turned up that collision velocity scale, this would drag the smoke much more dra dramatically. But yeah, that's the whole effect. I found it to be quite flexible and you can even go into the DOP network and swap out the solver for a sparse solver and everything will still work the exact same. There's a couple things you have to change around, but I can do a video on that another time if need be. I hope that you found this useful. It's very scalable effect. You can use this on any destruction simulation with any method of fracturing. You can use it on any model. You may have to tweak your fracture settings or method, uh, depending on if it's a heavy geometry, but everything will still work the same. The debris source will still work the same. The pyro will still work the same and the collisions will still work the same. I hope that this has been helpful. And if so, feel free to subscribe, leave a like or comment if you have any further questions and I'd be happy to help. Now I'm gonna do a brief rundown of the nodes Okay, welcome all my Houdini professionals. I'm just gonna do a quick run through of the nodes for you. All right, so I have my geometry that I wanna fracture here. It's just a torus transformed up in the air. And then I have run a simple fracture on it, which has given me these nodes. All I've changed on the RBD fracture is the constraints. I've set the primary strength to 130 and the chipping glue strength to zero, and I've turned on chipping. I've then turned the VDB to volumes, I did a point V attribute as a velocity acceleration vector type. So I can use it for collisions later. And I've had that as a null coming out. Uh, after that, I've selected my entire geometry fracture and I've hit that with a debris source from the shelf tool in rigid bodies. And I've edited it slightly. So um, all I've done here is changed on the debris source is I have um, set the lifespan to one. I set a speed threshold of one and I have ticked remove unreleased and remove life end. And that's all I've changed in here. I'll get to these in a second. I then use my debris source and ran a legacy Pyrofx billowy smoke on it. And I have set my power up as such. All I've done in here is add a collision source, which targets the aforementioned uh, VDB collision. And then I have turned the clamp to maximum bounce off in the resize container. I've added a ground plane so they can collide with the ground. And uh, I have changed this from a default of 0 0.07 to 0 0.03 for a little bit of a finer um, simulation. Going back to the debris source, creating that smoke, uh, pyro simulation, sorry, would have created these. So all I've changed in these is I have gone into the create density. I've made the particle separation a little smaller and I've changed the particle scale from one to from two to one and then in the rasterize I have not changed anything and that's the entire simulation in a nutshell all right take care bye